We do a lot of testing here at eTechnics, and I mean a lot, from motherboards to CPUs, and most importantly lately, graphics cards. The issue we have is that this isn't done on a single test bench. We have a bunch of different ones for different purposes. With a lot of our testing, however, some of the tests kind of overlap. So while we have the ability to have multiple test benches with very large capacity NVMe drives, like the Seagate Firecuda 520s, installing, updating, and configuring isn't exactly always the best. So now we think we've actually found a solution to combat all of that. And that's where these new Surefire external drives come into play. And we're giving away four of them. So make sure you stick around to the end for that. Now, one of the biggest parts of testing is consistency. Results are allowed to be out, but as long as they are consistently out, then you have a fair test. And we pride ourselves on being as fair as possible under the circumstances that we work in. When benchmarking, you're reading and writing huge amounts of data back and forth, with game file sizes becoming even larger in size, <coughs> Call of Duty, and updates seemingly happening every other day, <coughs> Call of Duty again. Really need to get an air purifier or something in here. The discussion of keeping things consistent, well, that starts to go out the window a little bit. We needed a way that we could install everything into one place and simply swap it out between test benches as and when we needed. Test benches aside, we've done tons of builds here on the channel, and once we build them, we have to test them. And with a modest 100 megabit both ways lease line here in the office, it could take a lot of time downloading them each and every time, as well as, of course, updates. The other option is to set up cloning, but again, that would take time and would involve removing our main NVMe storage drives from the test benches or the gaming PC builds that we do every single time. And as my good friend Kimberly Sweet Brown Wilkins would say, Ain't nobody got time for that. That's where Surefire reached out to us with their new line of GX3 external gaming SSDs and hard drives for us to put all of our game libraries on and make our lives much easier. Because when you're testing and creating content, any time you can save can make quite a big difference, especially when you're striving to hit deadlines and of course, launch dates. One thing that we wanted to make sure is that by moving all of our files over, we weren't hitting any snags, and more importantly, bottlenecks, because when benchmarking games, this could mean being hit by FPS drops and ultimately throwing our consistency of testing out the window. So the drives themselves, well, Surefire is a name you likely haven't heard of, but they aren't any old slapdash kind of brand. They're actually a new brand owned by Verbatim, a name we're probably all familiar with from when we all used to rip CDs and DVDs. I mean, not me personally, honestly, never. The drives come in two flavors, an SSD available in both 512 gig and one terabyte capacities and a hard drive available in both one terabyte and two terabyte sizes for those needing a bit more space. As you'd expect for sheer outright performance, the SSD is gonna be faster, but as they both use USB 3.2 Gen 1 as an interface, at least the drives aren't being bottlenecked there. They also come with a USB Type-C adapter for those wanting to use that too. Because they're aimed at gamers, Surefire has incorporated a sleek design with multicolored RGB lighting because, well, as we all know, RGB makes everything better and faster, right? And if using with a pimped out gaming PC or one of the latest consoles, it should actually tie in quite perfectly. So let's talk about speeds. From our own testing, the SSD had decent sequential read and write speeds, while the hard drive, albeit slower, still was around the maximum sequential speed that you'd expect from a mechanical drive. But we all know raw performance speeds don't equate to what actually happens in game, with file sizes being so different and how different drives deal with compressible and incompressible data. And that's the all important thing here, especially for us in our rigorous testing methodology. Let's start with Steam. Valve have made it quite easy and actually allow you to add multiple Steam library folders, meaning you can create a new one on your external drive, close Steam, move all of your games over and simply restart. Once you verify your game cache files, you'll be up and running. And for all future installs, you can set the new directory as your default install location. Other clients make it a bit more fiddly, like the dreaded Epic, which for the record, I have not actually had any issues with. For Epic, you have to make a backup of the game or games, uninstall the game, reinstall it to a few percent, cancel the install, copy the game files over, and then resume the process. Surely they could have made it a little bit easier than that. The simplest of all is probably Ubisoft Connect, formerly known as Uplay. When you go to download a game, it gives you the option to download or to locate an installed game. Simply tell it where it is, wait for it to verify, and away you go. Take note, Epic, 
this is how you're meant to do it. Can't believe I'm actually praising Ubisoft for something. Next, I'll be saying how bug-free Bethesda games are. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, before we move all our game files, we needed some base numbers to see what kind of, you know, figures we're dealing with. For clarity, the system stayed the same throughout with a Ryzen 3900X, 16 gig of Team Group 3600 megahertz memory, a Zeus Crosshair 8 Hero Wi-Fi, and an XFX 6800 XT Merc 319. Drive-wise, we're using a typical Seagate Firecuda 522TB Gen 4 drive, like we use in all of our GPU tests. Testing in a variety of games that use different engines, DirectX versions, and of course the clients that I mentioned was a must, as they may access the data in different ways and give us a broader spectrum of results so we can see if running from an external drive really does make a difference when it comes to those glorious frame rates. Once we had our results in seven different games, it was the turn of the SSD, of which transferring everything over was fairly quick due to it being an SSD. The hard drive would obviously take a lot longer and after probably around a decade of solely using SSDs for pretty much everything I do, that was the part I gotta be honest, I was kind of dreading the most. So the results are in and for the most part are what I expected. In some tests like Dirt 5 and Far Cry New Dawn, the hard drive actually beat the SSD. Though you could argue margin of error and retesting multiple times did see these figures change a little bit. Borderlands 3 and Watch Dogs Legion were the only tests that actually saw a slight variance with both the external drives compared to the Firecuda 520 NVMe boot drive. Borderlands actually saw the hard drive beaten by the external SSD and then again by the boot drive. But again, margin of error could be argued for most of the variants. For actually what we set out to do, the results are pretty conclusive. You could argue that running titles from an external drive, whether it be an SSD or a hard drive, has a negligible difference, if any at all. With us wanting to be as consistent as possible, I do have my reservations, and really only for one reason. We've got spreadsheets upon spreadsheets of results that we've collected over time, and I hate to do anything to kind of throw that out of whack. Moving forward, however, when it comes to a group retest, which we do every so often when we upgrade our platform, motherboard and CPU-wise, it's definitely something I consider doing, but where we can put things into action straight away is actually for other projects. Anyone who's seen any of our build videos will know that once we build a PC, we get to testing it on a variety of games. And instead of having comparisons like we do with GPUs, we show gameplay footage of that particular system on its own. And having an external drive with our library of games on will definitely speed things up for us. And that means we can pump out more content a lot quicker to you guys. It does go to show that with the way that things are in the market at the moment, you now have another solution for storing all of your games. Whether that's because you already have an external drive to use or you're in the market for one, it's definitely now an option. And these drives from Surefire, well, they did exactly what we expected them to do. PC aside, the other use is for console users with the ability to plug it into an Xbox or PlayStation, giving you a larger capacity without voiding your warranty. It is worth noting though, that you won't be able to play Xbox Series X or S enhanced games from it, as that's reserved to play on the inbuilt Microsoft proprietary SSD. You can, however, back up the games to the drive, but to play them, you'd have to restore them back to the inbuilt storage. The PS5 shouldn't see any issues, but load times may be a little slower than the blistering fast built-in SSD. So the only question you have left is, which one do you get? We showed that for our particular circumstances, the SSD and the hard drive were pretty much on par. With the larger two terabyte capacity of the hard drive, it seems like the logical move. Just be prepared that the initial moving of the files will be around three to four times slower, but still saving us time by not having to re-download or copy over to a new PC every single time. And I'm actually really interested to know, let me know which one you'd go for in the comments section below. And also let me know what size and type of drive you're rocking in your very own system. Now, I did also mention at the start of this video, we are giving away four drives with a one terabyte hard drive, two terabyte hard drive, 512 gig SSD, and a one terabyte SSD up for grabs. To be eligible, simply show us a picture of your system on Twitter using the hashtag, I need more storage. And comment below this video with a link to your tweet so we know that you've done it. Usual terms apply and all the shipping is covered to your door minus any customs duties. Fake accounts will obviously be disqualified and all that other usual stuff. Again, a huge shout out to Surefire for sponsoring this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.